How's it everybody and welcome back to another recording of Total War Warhammer. My name's Psyche and I'm going to be taking you through this game. Now, uh, after the last game that we did with the Vampire Accounts, I really... Oh, excuse me. Yo. I really just wanted to do another game with the Vampire Accounts. So, what we have here is basically a list that I'm working on for uh, Isabella von Karstein. And it consists of three regular skeleton warriors uh, and then two grave guard off here into the middle the stunsman is right at the back and they are protecting uh isabella moncarstein which again i still can't believe how good this model looks uh it's a very cool model and then three squads of the crypt horrors here hiding in the back is a regular necromancer and then the claw of nagash sorry guys if you hear my a dog barking in the background it is my dog uh, and if it gets much worse or continues for too long, I will make a plan. Uh, and then over here, we've seen this in the previous game. I've got the Blood Knights and I have the Dire Pack, which I'm trying to use in unison now as my anti-large options. Um, our opponent for this game was a Beastman army and they had Gore Herds, Gore Herds, Beastie Gores, Gore Herds, Beastie Gores, Gore Herds. Gore, beastie Gores and Gore Herds. So they had a lot of Gore Herds and a lot of Beastie Gores. They had two squads of the Angor Spearmen, which was standing off here by the flanks. They had two squads of the Centigors. Now these are the regular guys, not the great weapons. Um, their army is led by Morgur, the Shadow Grave, and he's uh, joined by the Bray Shaman of Death. Okay, here at the back we've got three squads of Angor Raiders and an additional squad of Angor Spearmen. Okay. So, let's get this game underway, guys. So, uh, just looking at the battle as it starts. So, um, at this point in time, I noticed that the Centigors were on that side of the battlefield. So, I was just pulling my guys across to that side to ensure that they will be available for whenever we need to uh, use them to countercharge the Centigors or maybe just to directly charge them. And for now, uh, seeing as nobody's got any ranged weapons, we just... Uh, we just encroach upon one another. And he's hiding his Angor Raiders uh, at this moment in time. So they do have Sulk. You won't see them unless you get within a certain range. Um, the Vampire Counts Army. Now I do see that he's set up this way. So uh, pretty soon I will be changing the way I'm facing him. I'm just changing my facing to make sure that we get as solid and flat a charge as we possibly can. And you can see there that he is constantly repositioning his army while we are simply just trying to see what's going on. So over here I realized that he's definitely not going to charge in anytime soon. And uh, I decided, alright, well then it's up to the dead things to move towards the living things and then try and eat the living things. So that's fantastic. Alright, so as we get closer to uh, our opponent, I'm just keeping an eye and I'm uh, just moving these guys to ensure that they're always in a flanking position or at the very least covering these guys at the back. I don't want them to just charge with uh, no repercussions for my opponent. And then of course, uh, we are encroaching on my opponent right now. Um, it was a funny, uh, there was a very funny oh poop, oh poop, oh poop moment uh, coming up pretty soon. So as we uh, move on to, we do see that he is casting a vortex spell and suddenly our entire army is like, no, we don't want to get eaten by the vortex. So, but unfortunately, a lot of the skeleton warriors do get sucked in. Uh, some of the grave guard. Yes, unfortunately, if you look at the way the Vortex moves, it does suck in and have a few additional guys, but we were fortunate. We literally didn't lose a single model from that spell, which is quite expensive to overcast. So that was a pretty good dodge as far as dodges go. Um, and there was no repercussion for moving the entire army in, in that manner because there was no range that's putting pressure on us. Unfortunately, it did kind of break my formation ever so slightly, which is also good because the Skeleton Warriors ended up running in first and they ended up taking all the damage from the Angor Raiders. So, you know, all said and done, not too damn bad. As the battle starts, Isabella von Karstein immediately throws down the Monster of Begilman. Uh, just to make sure that we take as little damage as possible and as you can see over here it's just a massive charge we are engaging with one another all over the place all right now the um th something that is very important to note if you are going to face vampire counts you kind of want to get rid of the mortis engine or the claw of nagash depending on which one there is as soon as humanly possible we do have a squad of zombies summoned right here by the angle raiders they won't necessarily win the fight, but they will keep them busy for a little bit, which at least nullifies some of the damage that could be done. And I tried to summon a, a zombie squad over here at the back. Unfortunately, they popped out over here. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. 
We do have apocalyptic vision going off on our opponent's army, and as you can see here, uh, a, uh, a squad of the Angor Raiders did get, get caught out by the zombies, which is good for me. That means that they are taking less damage, and because Isabella von Karstein was stuck in combat uh, over there, I couldn't really reach much further. So I ended up summoning a, a squad of an additional squad of zombies over here, and then a squad of zombies over here, which are then going to try and go off over here. You can see the Blood Knights and the large guys that charge into the Centigore and into the Spearmen, and these zombies should be running off to the Angor Spearmen pretty soon. Soon. The, the Centigors did catch out the Mortis Engine and it did take a lot of damage. I do have an, uh, an overcasted Invocation of Neck going off right on top of the uh, Mortis Engine or the Claw of the Gash in this case, but unfortunately I had nothing to deal uh, with these guys that was coming from the back, so we just had to uh, resign ourselves to the fact that the Claw of the Gash was going to die. Which is a bad thing, uh, because it actually helps a lot with the amount of magic that you can do. So over here, I've summoned an additional zombie squad to just deal with the centigors. And over here, I've summoned an additional zombie squad to just deal with the madness over there. Over here, you can see the blood knights are trying their absolute best to get into combat with all these Angor Raiders to stop the range attacks from happening. And these zombies are moving across into the Angor Raiders over there. I believe that the dire pack... Yep, oopsies, they're still here. So the Dire Pack, uh, they're still supporting the uh, Blood Knights while fighting over here. But unfortunately, they, they do have very low morale. But we do get a nice charge off over there. So we've got one squad of Angor Spearmen still shooting. We've got another squad of zombies all over the place, as you can see there. So uh, for this army with Isabella von Karstein, I really wanted to just uh, do... So we've got a squad of Chaos Spawn that was actually spawned from one of my units. Uh, here at the back, but as the battle seems to be going right now, I don't feel too bad about it. Um, yes, yeah, so these guys are close to breaking, and we do get uh, another Chaos Spawn unit summoned right there. So this one was the direct summon, and this one was the summon to do the damage that comes from the dead guys. We've got another squad of zombies here at the back, and uh, finally we do manage to get into uh, close combat with Mogor of the Shadowgrave. Isabella von Karstein did move up to cast, and I thought she would still be stuck in the melee, so she ended up uh, just standing around a little bit for too long, although in retrospect it's not all that bad because, you know, I mean, she would... Uh, Two would have been a lot more tired by now. And as you can see, a lot of the squads here at the back have now finally started breaking. Um, the line of combat over here is kind of going our way, slowly but surely. The Dire Pack, they're still alive and they are going to be running away for time being. Um, they're on a lot of kills. They're actually on 62 kills. That's pretty impressive. These zombies are going to, again... Uh, match themselves up with the Angor Raiders over there, and as you can see, these guys, all of these squads that are now moving uh, to encroach here to get into close combat with Morgor the Shadow Grab. So over here, I've got Red Fury going off, and then Isabella von Karstein now goes back into battle with our opponent, and she, at this point in time, should be uh, fine. Yeah, so she's pretty much fine. The Necromancer, all these guys, they're actually all going to move up now and try and get to Morgor. Now, the reason why I wanted to get to Morgor, okay, these Blood Knights are still busy just chasing things down, is because the army is typically at low morale for most of it. Ah, they he tried to cast right behind us, but we moved our entire army up, and that one actually also whipped. So I gotta say, we managed to dodge two very bad vortexes this game, so I'm fairly happy about that. Unfortunately, our dire pack finally gets uh, chased down or caught by the Centigors that is going to end up killing them. These zombies have done a great job over here, but they will die pretty soon. And uh, now we've got our entire army centralized here around Morgor, and there's just no reason not to do this right now. Because if we can get to him, and if we can kill him, then yes, it's going to be a fantastic, a fantastic game for us. And you can see there, he is fighting his heart out. He's got a spirit leech going off somewhere. I don't even know where that comes from. Oh, that's from his Brave Shaman of Death. So he's spirit leeching, I'm guessing, Isabella von Karstein or my Necromancer. And now my opponent is bringing all of his units back into this melee. Uh, which does benefit me if I could get any additional wins of magic. Unfortunately, they are spent with all the summons we've done. So the only thing I can do is to continue summoning zombies. And at this point in time, they are kind of useful because they can end up breaking morale. So Morgor is still standing there. As everybody knows, this guy is nah, He's almost unkillable. He's kind of like Vlad. He, he's like the last guy to stand. Um, but we've got low morale all across the board, and this is really working in our favor. Pulling everybody in this way, it actually means that oh, most of his army is currently under the effect of fear. So for us, it is fantastic. And if Morgor was just going to break, or if he was going to die, 
that would make life significantly easier for us. So we can see over here we already have a shatter going off on one of the gore herds. And uh, so a lot of the units are kind of trying to make their way back. The Blood Knights are chasing all of the guys running away. They are trying to chase them. Uh, they did get stuck on the Angle Spearman herd though. These zombies are just going to continue chasing the Angle Raiders which are now pretty much just uh, left to die and this should be it so Morgar is there in the middle of the fight with Isabella von Karstein but he ends up dying as well so yes he is now dead and uh, we can take it from there so pretty much the only things that are left right now is uh, all squads and all of them are broken and running away so it's only a matter of time and the only thing left that can keep them together is the Bray Shaman of Death unfortunately he is getting targeted by the Blood Knights um, and they are really doing a lot of damage. He's currently shaken. If we can manage to get him to break, then yes, we, it would be fantastic and this game would be over. So as you can see, I'm literally just ignoring whatever's happening over there. And I'm just charging after all these guys, trying to make sure that we get there as soon as we can. An undead resurgent going off there. Uh, the British Roman of Death, he does get uh, pinned down by the Blood Knights finally. We're on uh, quite a number of kills and there we go. All right, so that was an interesting game with uh, Isabella Montkarstein. With the man car with the v Van Karstein army, um, I'm actually liking this army list. It's pretty cool. Uh, but if we look at the tail of the type, and there's something very impressive that happened in this game, the Blood Knights ended up with 252 kills. That is incredible. I have not seen people. Uh, I've not seen. I've not. I don't think I've ever had knights that got over 220 odd kills. So that's pretty damn cool. 29 on Isabella, 75, 95. 86 uh, 79 as one would expect i mean beastmen do bring a lot of guys but 252 that is impressive for me that is a fantastic result set for the blood knights uh morger got 23 kills uh, 75 on one of these guys well done you 143 but we summoned like a gazillion zombies so i guess that makes sense 143 95 17 128 yes that is a hero ungo raider over there and then 31 72 and 64 on the beastie gore herd so yes uh, uh a good showdown i think um it was a good it was a good fight and uh yeah i was i was pretty happy with that so guys if you like the content of my channel subscribe to my channel uh if you do you will get notifications whenever new content comes out otherwise just leave a comment leave a like we'll have a chat things would be great guys that's gonna be it from me thank you very much for watching and of course as always i'm gonna see you guys for the next recording but until then bye.